they made an impulse purchase? What were they thinking? They bought a cargo parachute. What were they thinking? So Statement of Intent is our project name. What we kind of meant it as a, a, an initial jumping off point but we decided that we liked being within in sort of intentionality, we liked the state of uh, kind of not knowing exactly what was going to happen. Our artwork tends to um, be made in a way that is um, evolving so it's never a kind of stable or resolved entity and so it always has a kind of element of intentionality, it's never, never you know complete. Heather and myself, we've both just recently completed art practice based PhD doctoral studies of Kurt Schwitter's, both completely different aspects of Schwitter's legacy. In one piece in particular that we were interested in was this piece called um, Kurt Schwitter's and I write an opera at the movies. This was written by Raoul Hausman. The ideas from their uh, discussion focused on the above and, and the below in the staging of this opera and we, we found that sort of contrast and the possibility of the movement between above and below as a motif. We started to think about the motif in relation to objects and we ended up buying this parachute which seemed to us to be an object which embodied the principles of above and below which was able to be um, utilised in a space filled with air but also fell to the ground and could become a different kind of structure um, and we bought this disused parachute from the MOD off eBay. What were they thinking? Yes, it landed on the doorstep. Uh, when it arrived, it was actually a cargo parachute. It was 90 feet um, square, 70 kilograms. It, we weren't expecting that, so it, it was kind of almost like a, a mistake purchase, really. But we, 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 we kind of embraced that, decided to go with it. And in, in doing so, we kind of created uh, a problem for ourselves to solve. So we really studied it, we thought about where the stitching was, where we could cut it, what those parts suggested. We just did that kind of intuitively, um, working our way around this parachute which as, it, as things transpired was a cross shape. So we cut these parts down, we brought them over to Preston to the studios here at the Burley and started to play with them and being playful is really a part of what Jackie and I do. We, we put things on, we place ourselves in certain situations and start to think about what do we want to do with these pieces? How might we interact with them? What do they suggest to us? And how might they be used in certain situations? We took uh, some of the parachute pieces uh, into Art Lab and started uh, printing, screen printing, uh, quite big sections of it as a way to kind of jumpstart our use of these um, newly manageable pieces of fabric. We started to print words onto the parachute fabric like above and below. Yes! <laughs> <It's the one. laughs> yes! And with the printed fabric we then decided to um, make picnic blankets out of the uh, pieces because we'd kind of already been talking about the idea of hospitality. The first manifestation of it happened at Loughrigg Tarn. And Loughrigg Tarn was significant actually in that Schwitters used to go there often when he was working in the Lake District in the 1940s when he was making his final Mertz barn. And he would go to Loughrigg Tarn and have picnics. So we were interested in connecting with the history of that. When we were doing our PhDs in 2018, we both did a, uh, an exhibition together called Mets Women and the Daughters of Dada, that was at the Vallum Gallery. And we put it together within this space and we decided to do a performance on the opening night. And we um, used this, there's this film called Dinner for One, and it's like a 10 minute comedy sketch and it's really, really famous in Northern Europe. And it's around the idea of a dinner party. Um, and so as part of um, creating this kind of dinner party environment, Jackie had made balloons, which were supposed to be an equivalent of kind of food. Tate and I made a whole crockery dinner service made out of unfired clay, which I could then smash. There was a real kind of um, play between that kind of scripted element of the work and then what was left much more open to improvisation and chance. And I'm just sort of like leant over the table and you can see my shoulders going like that. I just absolutely lost it. But luckily Heather 
kept a composure, so there was that tension. <laughs> so with Dada Amino, we were invited um, to be part of this Dada festival in Amino in Italy. And we started to work with two other parts of the parachute fabric, which had these kind of necklines. This is them here. So they had um, this kind of thing that you put around your neck, um, which either kind of could have been like a cape or like a bib. So we took the, um, the norm, which is a dada, a, a kind of aperitivo, which they have in Italy at a certain time every night. You know, they'll have a glass of wine, snacks around six o'clock. That would be called spoiling your tea where I come from. We had what looked like bar snacks set up on our dresses, but as part of that we were also playing tennis. What happened as part of that performance again was completely open to chance. And during the whole performance, the um, collaged food that we had placed on in between ourselves on the dresses was getting stacked. And we went for the um, tabula rasa effect as well, which is also a dada trope, which in involved us like getting hold of the edge of the tablecloth that you know we're wearing as a bib and like really like heaving it up into the air so everything went flying and it's this idea of like just sort of wiping the table clean of all of all the stuff that's like messing society up and starting again by coming together as artist a and artist b uh, we're both bringing different skills into our uh, realm um i know that jackie knows how to stitch things and pull things together and that she'll show me those skills and that I know how to be in a printmaking environment and talk to her about that and mix colour and, and that kind of thing. So it's allowed us in some ways to be less fearful of the unknown and to take on bigger projects because we know that we have more skills at our disposal that we can then bring together and um, film edit and for example we're doing that as part of um, our British Textile Biennial project. We got in touch with BTB there. Um, their theme this year is fast fashion. And it seemed to really fit what we were doing with this um, decommissioned cargo parachute and the possibilities that were within that. Because of the links with parachutes um, being used to make dresses, like wedding dresses, like historically. There was an Arts Council application and then finally we got the funding in January. And so we've been working on that since January 2023, up until now. Uh, support from UTB itself and also from CEPRA at UCLAN. So bringing, bringing all that together, we've got like a really substantial project we, and we know we're making a lot of work. We're working on a large scale performative picnic um, that will uh, encompass the kind of history or some of the history of the East Lancashire girl guiding unit. Part of this performance is also us into large scale parachute dresses. So we will be performing in these, we'll be hosting the picnic in these dresses. Um, and there might even be, the, well, the girl guides, the brownies and the rainbows are also going to be our participants for the picnic. And they're gonna help us uh, make this uh, piece that we've got, got that's called the fastfashion.net. We're going to take that along with us and basically it's a, f a four metre by four metre net made out of the strips that we've cut off the parachute and it's, it's just like a really gorgeous object. And we were interested in this, um, the title, the surplus badge, a surplus of fabric, army surplus, um, surplus to requirements. We took a photograph of our .net piece and had it um, designed up into a a badge that you know will eventually be earned and sewn and given out and sewn onto the uh, uniforms. As far as this project is concerned, we've got British Textile Biennial, but after that, we we're just continuing really with the parachute. So we've still got a surplus of material, really, <laughs> which is fantastic. Uh, there's just a lot of scope for it, really. So um, we'll we'll be working hard on that as well after. And we'd love to tour the work as well, you know, we've made quite a few pieces all with the idea that they are mobile, that they can be transported, that they can be placed in new settings and engaged with by different audiences. So we're really hoping that the work tours not only nationally but internationally. So um, yeah, that's the next step for us really.